Do you have creepy creatures like this in your home? Yes. Yes, you do. In this video, I'll feature the top 10 creatures that you may find in your home. Okay, it's not really a top 10, just 10 creatures that you might encounter there. Some may wander in by accident, but others have set up residence in your home because they find it a suitable habitat in which to live. Some of these creatures may be harmful, while others are nothing to worry about. And you might be surprised at which ones you should worry about, and which ones aren't as bad as you might think. Let's begin with a scary creature that's usually not as bad as people might think. And don't get me wrong. The striped bark scorpion packs a wallop of a sting, but it isn't really that dangerous. However, there is one scorpion in the United States, the Arizona bark scorpion, that can be dangerous, but more on that later. There are many different species of scorpions in the United States, with most being in the southern half of the country, where it's generally warmer. The striped bark scorpion inhabits the south central area of the country, particularly Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, along with portions of New Mexico, Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Louisiana. While some scorpions get quite large, striped bark scorpions are fairly small, only growing to about two and three quarter inches in length, outstretched tail included. Now, these creatures mostly live outdoors, but may wander into your home when searching for snacks under a porch light. The first time I was stung by one was outdoors. I was hauling away some brush that had been sitting for quite some time. I had been wearing leather gloves, but after taking a break, I forgot to put them back on. I grabbed several branches barehanded, and one stung the side of my finger. The pain was immediate, and it felt like I'd been injected with molten lava. However, the pain radius ended at the base of my finger, which lasted about an hour. My son's first experience with the sting was in the house. He was walking across the kitchen floor, and all of a sudden he jumped into the air and screamed at the same time. I knew immediately what had happened. We looked down and there was a striped bark scorpion. Scorpions feed on insects, spiders, centipedes, and even other scorpions. Now, of the dozens of scorpion species found in the United States, the Arizona bark scorpion is the most venomous and can be dangerous. It is commonly found in Arizona, but also inhabits parts of New Mexico, southern Utah, southern Nevada, and the Mexican states of Sonora and Chihuahua. To prevent stinging encounters with scorpions, it is recommended that people not leave shoes, boots, clothing items, or wet towels outdoors where scorpions can hide. Wear gloves when working in the yard, and wear shoes outdoors, especially during the evening hours. The next creature you may find in your home is a woodlouse. Woodlice are typically found in the bathroom, particularly in or around the tub. While many people might be fond of a family of woodlice known as Armadilla deidae, affectionately called pill bugs, roly polies, or doodle bugs, some may worry about this creature, which is either a powder blue isopod or a flowery blue isopod. They are also known as sow bugs, and whereas many people find roly polies cute, the appearance of sow bugs may cause concern. Are they earwigs? Will they bite? Are they silverfish? Will they eat my family? The answer to all those questions is no. Sow bugs are completely harmless. However, their appearance in your home may indicate a problem. Sow bugs are attracted to rotting and moldy wood, so their presence might stem from a water leak somewhere. But they also sometimes just wander in by accident while searching for food around your home. Found all over the world, woodlice live in moist, decaying vegetation, primarily in gardens, forests, and leaf litter. Sow bugs are not harmful because they do not sting or bite, they won't infest clothing, food, or wood, and they do not pass on any diseases to humans. Also, they are beneficial to have in gardens. Here is a sow bug that unfortunately found itself in the web of our next featured creature, a cobweb spider. These are generally spiders in the genus Steatota, also known as false widow spiders. This particular species is the triangulate cobweb spider, Steatota triangulosa, which has quite a range around the world and is fairly common in the United States. It is known for the triangle-shaped pattern on the dorsal side of its abdomen, as seen here. These are the tiny spiders you see in the corners of your home, up near the ceiling, under the furniture, in the garage, storage sheds, etc. They are typically found in their webs, which are irregular tangles of sticky silken fibers. Steatota spiders are not aggressive and prefer to stay out of the way. 
Like nearly all spiders, they do have a bit of venom, but a bite is not dangerous, unless a person is allergic to insect and spider venom. For my entire life, I've allowed these spiders to live peacefully in my home, and I've never had an issue with them. And I've handled these creatures many times. And since I don't spray insecticides around my home, these spiders are actually beneficial, preying on things that may wander into the house. They eat pretty much whatever insect or spider that becomes ensnared in their web. Steatota species are found nearly all over the world, save for Antarctica. I always enjoy finding our next creature, usually around the outside of my home. The Mediterranean house gecko is a very cool looking lizard, which is native to the Mediterranean region, but has spread to other parts of the world. These creatures, also known as moon lizards, are found over much of the United States, especially in warmer areas. I love to observe these geckos, but they prefer to stay out of sight. They emerge in the evening to prey on crickets, roaches, beetles, moths, spiders, isopods, snails, etc. They're not really harmful to humans, but wild geckos can carry some bacteria, so if you handle one, hand washing is recommended. It is also recommended that you do not ingest these creatures. Additionally, if handled, do so gently as they can lose their tail, which is a defense mechanism. Once the tail breaks off, a potential predator will be distracted by it, allowing the gecko to scurry away. And just know, the gecko's tail will grow back. Although I think our next featured creature is super cute, it is one of the few in this video that I absolutely do not want in my home. Although they are not typically dangerous, house mice can spread disease to humans, even without direct contact. Disease transmission can occur through their feces, urine, and saliva. They can also contaminate food and cause fires by chewing through electrical wires. And while a single little mouse wouldn't seem like that big a deal, one individual can quickly become dozens and create a terrible infestation. While it's not foolproof, one of the best ways to prevent mouse infestations is to keep your home clean and free of food sources. Even a few crumbs left on the floor each night can be enough to sustain a mouse. And while I typically don't talk about pest control in my videos, mainly because I actually like the creatures that many people consider pests, but with mice at my house, I use snap traps. There are many types of traps available that tout humanely catching mice for release, so you can try those if you'd like. But two things I recommend that you do not use are poisons and glue traps. For one thing, a poison mouse can be eaten by a family pet or wander outside and get eaten by a bird. This can cause secondary poisoning, so poisons are not a good thing. I also don't recommend using glue traps. To me, they are barbaric, maybe the most inhumane way to eliminate pests. Additionally, creatures such as spiders, frogs, snakes, and even birds can get trapped on these horrific devices. This is a hummingbird that was caught in a glue trap and was later rescued and taken to a rehabber. Now, I have one of these live traps, which I use in my garage. It has captured young mice in the past, which I then release, but adults seem to avoid it. And if you do use snap traps, peanut butter is the best bait, not cheese. The best way is to smear a small amount of peanut butter on the catch, then cover it tightly with a small piece of bread. Using the bread prevents a mouse from just licking the peanut butter off the catch, which may not activate the device. Also, use latex or nitro gloves when baiting the trap so it doesn't get contaminated with your scent. Additionally, be sure to place the device with a trap side against the wall and out of reach of children and pets. The next creature is a drain fly, which is curious looking, but not harmful. This particular species is a bathroom moth fly. Clogmia albin. I can't pronounce its Latin name, so I'll put it on the screen. This species can be found near sewer drains, sewage treatment plants, plant pots, swamps, and any other shaded place containing decaying, moist organic matter. However, you may see them around your household drains, such as the bathroom sink. Adults live about 12 days and spend most of their life perched on walls. They move rarely and are weak flyers. Larvae live in aquatic environments where they feed on organic decaying matter. For one reason or another, you've almost certainly seen vinegar flies. And not in the great outdoors, but in your home, most likely in your kitchen. I would guess that people mostly see these creatures on bunches of overripened bananas that were left on the kitchen counter. You know, the bananas you don't want to eat because they become a little too brown, so you set them aside with plans to make banana bread, but you never do. 
These tiny, slow-flying insects are often mistakenly identified as gnats and or fruit flies. There are about 175 species of these flies in North America and over 60 species in the genus Drosophila. For this video, I am featuring Drosophila melanogaster. They are teeny tiny at about 2.5 millimeters and males are slightly smaller than females. To put it simply, these bugs are barely visible to the naked eye. Vinegar flies will often gather on bananas, as mentioned previously, or on other aging or rotting fruit or vegetative matter. I'll have a complete video on this species in the future, but just know, they are not harmful, but can be annoying. And, without delving into it too much, I'll just say, this tiny insect is a big deal as they are important in scientific study. Thomas Hunt Morgan at Columbia University made Drosophila melanogaster famous by discovering genetic principles in its reproduction for which he received the Nobel Prize in 1933. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration even sends these insects into space. According to NASA, Drosophila melanogaster is an important model organism to scientists. And understanding what occurs with these tiny bugs can reveal big things about the basics of biology, including human biology. Drosophila melanogaster is yellowish brown and has brick red eyes. However, even with a magnifying glass, I'm not sure you could see one of these well enough to see these colors. Drosophila melanogaster is found on every continent except Antarctica. A quick internet search will turn up all sorts of ways that people get rid of vinegar flies, if you're interested. Many of us have seen common species of crickets, such as the field cricket which we know is no cause for concern. But upon seeing a camel cricket, some may question whether or not they are harmful. The camel cricket, also known as the cave cricket, isn't often found in homes, but may wander in when their survival is threatened by dry weather. If that's the case, they will seek out damp areas such as bathrooms, basements, utility rooms, and crawl spaces. They are not harmful to humans, but may chew on fabrics, including curtains and clothing. If you find one in your home, I would recommend just scooping it up in a plastic cup and relocating it outdoors. The brown recluse spider may be the most feared creature in this video, but they are not nearly as dangerous as many people may think. A bite from one of these spiders can be medically significant, but first let me say, bites from brown recluse spiders are very rare. I mean very rare. These spiders have tiny fangs and it takes some force for them to pierce human skin. Often a bite occurs when the spider is trapped between something and a person's skin. Additionally, the vast majority of people who are bitten do not have a severe reaction. Richard Vetter, a retired professor of entomology at the University of California, Riverside, and a brown recluse expert, said about 90% of bites only cause inflammation or nothing at all, while 10% of bites may cause some degree of necrosis. He said about 1% may cause systemic necrosis. Deaths from brown recluse bites are extremely rare. There have only been two confirmed deaths from brown recluse spiders in the United States. I have a separate video on the brown recluse, which I will link in the description. Here is a range map for Loxocella species in the United States. The range of the brown recluse, Loxocellus reclusa, is shown in red. And it wouldn't be impossible for this species to be found outside of this range, but not by much. The brown recluse is often confused with many other species of spider, but it has a very distinctive look and there is a violin shaped marking on its cephalothorax, as seen here. To learn more on this species, click on the link in the description. The vast majority of jumping spiders live outdoors, but some occasionally wander indoors. But don't worry, these fuzzy creatures are pretty harmless and are a form of pest control. You may find them on your walls or ceiling where they will be hunting for insects that probably strayed in when the door was open. They will eat pretty much whatever insect or spider they can overpower, including flies, roaches, moths, small crickets, etc. As well as their great jumping ability, jumping spiders have exceptional vision and hunt by ambush or by stalking. These spiders are quite gentle to humans and won't bite unless mishandled. I've spent hundreds of hours handling jumping spiders and I've never been bitten. If you find one in your home and you don't want it there, just gently coax it into a cup or some other container and release it outside. I have many videos about jumping spiders which I will link in the description. And before I go, let me say, I realize there are some creatures that you may find in your house that I didn't include in this video, like roaches and bed bugs, but I'll, I'll include some in a future video. Fortunately, I've never had bed bugs and I don't have roaches and 
I need to get photos and video of both, especially German cockroaches. Those are the ones that really infest people's houses. But I'll make a video on that in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Oh, hello. I'm Randy from Randy's Natural World. I hope you enjoyed the video on creepy creatures in your home. Yes, yes, that's it. Today I'm pretending to be a scientist. Maybe I'm doing research on a five o'clock shadow. I'm not sure, but that's neither here nor there. I'm hoping to speak to those of you who haven't subscribed yet. Here's a list of reasons why you should. It's free. You can't beat that price. Number two, quality content. Always quality content. Number three, YouTube allows unlimited subscriptions, so there's no reason not to. Anyway, number four, are you a procrastinator? There's no need to procrastinate. And I know what you're thinking. Randy, I'll subscribe when I get around to it. Well, here's your round to it right here. Round to it. So go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead. A wise decision.